Okay, now we're ready to talk about the quote-unquote real thesaurus, the kind of professional thesaurus that, um, that, has, that, that would make it worth being in a class like this about information structure. Not the garden variety thesaurus, but the thesaurus that does the full, uh, the full semantic modeling of an information of, of, a sub, of some subject matter domain. I mentioned the domain uh, earlier of astronomy, all of the terms that have to do with astronomy and all of their relationships. And their relationships aren't as simple as just synonyms and antonyms, right? That's one kind of relationship between terms, but there are many, many, many kinds of relationships between terms. In fact, as many relationships as there are terms, practically. And so what you want in a full-featured thesaurus that completely semantically models the, relationship between, the relationships between terms is to allow those terms to have any form of relationship and to somehow be able to categorize or codify those relationships. So the model that I've developed here is still fairly simplistic, so it should be easy to understand kind of on first look. Not nearly as sophisticated as the model that you'll come across in, um, uh, in the exercise on thesauri, because the exercise on thesauri tries to deal with a real live implementation. And so, as usual, their complexity creeps in as you try to do that. So I want to keep this one relatively simple, and I want to say that still, even though it's uh, even though it's a more sophisticated um, more sophisticated concept of a thesaurus, it still has the same basic structure as the ones we've looked at before. We have terms; those terms have an ID, and those terms have names, right? Just as they did before. Terms have IDs, and terms have names. And when and and the the the, the function of the thesaurus is to relate one term to another. There's a there's a there's then built in ways of relating terms to each other that are not as, um, as simplistic as the, say, as the synonym and antonym variety. In fact, all of the, all of the ways of studying thesauri that we've talked about, um, uh, hierarchies, indexes, cross-references, and sequences, are all built into this structure, even though it's not that much more sophisticated than the one we looked at earlier, which just had synonyms and antonyms. So let's go through this one piece at a time and look at it and, and, and discuss a little bit about how it might work and how it implements the things that a, um, that a full-fledged or a full-featured thesaurus needs to implement. Okay, so I've drawn some of the vocabulary from, um, from the thesaurus subject domain and some of it is, um, is from our subject domain. Like for example, ID and name, those are, those are, um, are from our domain. But the next one down the line, scope notes, is really a term from the domain of thesauri. It's something that thesaur thesaurus construction people talk about. And here's another, here's kind of a, another angle, I guess, that I want to attack this, this sort of issue from. There is the vocabulary that's used by people who create these things, and then there's the general vocabulary that we've developed for modeling anything, right? So in the world of the, uh, the, world of the thesaurus creator, there's something called the scope node. In our world, we have something called description. And one way for you to understand this kind of arcane term of scope note um, is to say it's the description. It's the notes. It's all the things you want to say about that term. So we're going to turn, we're, we're going to use the term scope notes because that's the term of art in this field, but we're going to understand it simply as a description. And when you see it as a description, all your knowledge about descriptions kicks in. For example, in this case, we're going to put the block model under scope notes, which allows us to add paragraphs and lists and tables and whatever we want to those scope notes. It gives us a full featured model, not only of the block elements, the paragraphs and lists and whatnot, but inside those paragraphs, whatever amount of inline uh, elementation that we want to add as well. So bolds and italics, whatever. So we've enhanced the old model of a description that simply is one paragraph, no children, to one that's a really robust and full featured one. And so we can have as much as we want under the scope notes. So those scope notes implement a very rich model of, um, of, how, uh, of, of, of the description, basically, of a term. OK, and then I've defined three kinds of relationships. Um, the broader term relationship, the related term relationship, and the used term relationship. I, I, um, I use this terminology as well because it's pretty much the terminology of the thesaurus world. And it implements the major features that thesauri usually, are, usually have. Um, for example, the broader term points to the term that is the parent term of the current term. So if, uh, if it was, um, let's see, uh, uh, maybe we're still, in the, um, we're still in, the, um, in the astronomy realm, and I want to talk about, um, uh, 
uh, let's see, I want to talk about uh, celestial bodies. I have a term called celestial bodies, and under celestial bodies is the term um, planet. And celestial bodies is the higher term, planet is the lower term. So in planet, in the term called planet, I would point to celestial bodies as being my parent, as being my term that's one higher. What do we call that? That's a hierarchy. So in thesaurus terms, in thesaurus creation terms, we call it the broader term. But in our terms, I hope you see that what we're doing is implementing a hierarchy. And furthermore, we're implementing a very specific kind of hierarchy. Scratch your brains, pause here, go back and look at the hierarchy topic, and see if you can figure out what kind of hierarchy we've implemented here. Not the only kind of hierarchy we could have implemented, but the one that I happen to choose in this case, because it most closely mirrors the way that thesaurus creators think about their hierarchies. We implemented, uh, <laughs> and now it, as I'm saying it, it's slipping my mind, we implemented a referential hierarchy, right? A hierarchy where the lower term points up to its parent. And that's how we define the hierarchy, by saying my parent is X, X's parent is Y, Y's parent is Z. That way, give, that gives us a whole, a whole huge hierarchy that we can build that way, as opposed to an explicit hierarchy that we could have created or a recursive hierarchy that we could have created. Okay, so that takes care of broader terms. We think of it as the hierarchy. In thesaurus language, it's the broader term under a particular term or over a particular term.